And when you look at St. Louis with two people that came out, they were going to be beat up badly if they were lucky, okay? If they were lucky. They were going to be beat up badly, and the house was going to be totally ransacked and probably burned down like they tried to burn down churches. And these people were standing there, never used it, and they were legal, the weapons. And now I understand somebody local, they want to prosecute these people. It's a disgrace. If it wasn't so tragic, it might rise to the level of parody. It might not come as a surprise to you. What Donald Trump just described was not what happened in St. Louis a few weeks ago. As our friend from The New York Times, Peter Baker, reports, quote, video of the episode, which became a flashpoint in the national debate over racial inequality, showed that the protesters at no point physically threatened the couple. That small little detail, though, of no consequence to Trump, the Republican governor of Missouri yesterday said he spoke to Trump about the issue on the phone. Quote, the president said that he would do everything he could within his powers to help with this situation, and he would be taking action to do that. End quote. Joining our conversation, our friend Jason Johnson, a professor of journalism and politics at Morgan State University, is back. Plus, editor at large for The Bulwark, Charlie Sykes, is here. Lucky for us, both of them, MSNBC contributors. Jason, let me welcome you back to this program. We have Thank missed you. you, my friend. Take this. Take this flashpoint, take Trump talking about it in an interview with CBS News and, and try to make sense of it for us. Uh, first off, when, when I saw the video, it just it made me think of like the Snells because I watched Ozark during the pandemic, like just this this angry Midwestern <laughs> Missouri couple that just wants to take out their anger on everyone who's different. Um, this this is this is Trump's modern Southern strategy. You know, his entire strategy going forward is there's an us versus them. Uh, and, and the them is anybody black, anybody brown, anybody queer, anybody poor, anybody who doesn't worship at the almighty temple of Trump. Um, and he's going to try and justify overt actions of violence as being politically necessary. This has been his strategy since last year. I, I always put these things in context. You had an entire bipartisan House of Congress declare the president was a racist last year. So we shouldn't be surprised that this is the strategy he's using moving forward. I just don't know if it's going to be effective anymore. Well, and Charlie Sykes, to, to Jason's point, it, yeah. it is turning out not to be effective in, in the polls unless Trump's conduct has driven even his own supporters deep underground. And, and as a, um, a watcher of politics, I suppose that's always possible. But the latest Quinnipiac poll has Joe Biden opening a 13 right. point lead. I think those are numbers that Jonathan Allen said in the last hour we haven't seen since Bob Dole. No, they are, they're absolutely stunning numbers, but it's another indication of how I think the president has lost the script. He's lost touch with reality. This whole scene out of St. Louis seems like something out of a Trump World Pornhub episode. You know, the white Brooks brother wearing couple <laughs> with their guns aimed at black protesters. The only thing missing was if, it, if you could just put them in a boat with a Trump flag, you have the perfect Trump fantasy of how he's going to turn this election around. When, in fact, I think most of the country is going, that's just ridiculous. Um, but Jason is absolutely right. I mean, this is not this is not just a dog whistle. I mean, this is the president who has one playbook, which is he's going to play that law and order card. He's going to say that the real threat to America are the other Americans. And, you know, we have to have, right. you know, white they're not suburbanites, but white suburbanites with guns protecting us against the caravans and the whatever. But um, it's not working. Uh, that Quinnipiac poll plus the uh, the battleground polls that we've been seeing over the last 24 hours would indicate that the president's instincts are betraying him. This was right. his big play, and it is not working. And Jason Johnson, I guess that says something good about who we are in this hour. Um, at this point, Joe Biden right. and national polls are they're not worthless. They illustrate trends. They're not predictive of election nights. But Joe Biden opening a 15 point lead over Donald Trump illustrates that it is this sort of toxic braid of his efforts to restore the glory of the Confederacy, his right. clearing of peaceful protesters in Lafayette Square, his incompetent failure on coronavirus, which is resulting in economic devastation that is moving this country toward terrain we haven't seen in a very long time. It has the political impact of polling terribly for him. Yeah. And, and Nicole, this is one key thing that I, I pay attention with any of the sort of 
you know, swing state polls. Usually if they have the, the combined swing state poll, I always say, look, there's no there's such a thing as, as North Florida Zona, right? Like you can't combine them all. You have to look at these states individually. And Trump's failures in every single one of these states is manifesting itself in a different way. In Pennsylvania, it's economic. In Arizona, it's the coronavirus. In Florida, it's coronavirus. He has several different areas where he has failed to deliver. And his failure, and the reason he's doing so badly in the polls, look, Trump was never going to do well with young people. He was never going to do well with black folks. He was never going to do well with Latinos. But he's losing the white vote. And if, if Joe Biden only gets about 40 percent of the white vote, he doesn't even have to hit Obama numbers. Trump is going to get wiped out in all of the states that he barely won in 2016. Charlie Sykes, I'm going to ask you a question I um, have been yeah. asking everybody on and off TV because I am burning with curiosity about whether the Republican Senate majority is in as much danger as Donald Trump's prospects for a second term. Oh, I absolutely think it, that it is. I mean, you you run through the the four states that I think are the most vulnerable. Whether you're talking about you know Colorado, Arizona, um, uh, you know Colorado, Arizona, Maine, even North Carolina, and then you add the second tier. And I have to look at my notes here. I mean, you're talking about Montana and Georgia and Iowa, and working down to you know the possibility is it possible that they could flip uh, you know Kansas and Texas? Who knows? If this is the kind of you know anti-Trump tsunami that looks like it's building right now, um, Republicans all up and down the ballot have to be terrified. And by the way, that weird Mad King press conference yesterday did not help. Can you imagine being Cory Gardner or Martha McSally and watching that bleep show from the Rose Garden and realizing that my political future is tied to this guy? Yes, I think it's very much in danger. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.